Our sermon text for today is the Gospel lesson for the 12th Sunday after Trinity. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. One of the themes of today's texts is that of hearing. In Isaiah, we read, In that day the deaf shall hear the words of the book. In the gospel, the Lord Jesus Christ causes a deaf and mute man to hear and to speak. Now, if one is to hear, there must be a message to be heard. Therefore, St. Paul in the epistle calls the message of the New Testament the ministry of the Spirit. For the word spirit comes from the word for breath. So that the ministry of the New Testament is the announcement of that message which proceeds from the breath of God. It is the same thing when St. Paul writes in Romans chapter 10, Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. In this verse, hearing really means hearing. What the ears do. But it would be wrong to say that therefore... A deaf man is excluded from salvation because of the weakness of his ears. The point is that what one hears is words. The ordinary way of communicating words is by speaking with the mouth. And the ordinary way of receiving words is by hearing with the ear. The deaf man cannot hear the spoken word. But the word of God can still come to him in other ways. Through the written word. Or through signs which communicate the word visually. However... A deaf man cannot be saved without the word of God. And this is the real crux of the verse. That faith only comes from the word of God. And no one is saved apart from that word. Now that word may come in different forms but it must be the word of God. For this reason, we confess in the small called articles that God grants his spirit or grace to no one except through or with the preceding outward word. The opposite and wicked teaching is that of the enthusiasts who are condemned in the formula of concord because they imagine that God, without means, without the hearing of God's word, also without the use of the holy sacraments, draws men to himself and enlightens, justifies, and saves them. Enthusiasm still exists today. Wherever it is taught that the word and sacraments are not necessary for man's salvation, or where some human fantasy is held up as a genuine means of grace. During the time of the Great Awakening in America, the means of grace were de-emphasized, replaced with personal revelations and visions of God, which God had not promised. 
the Roman Catholic Church is organized enthusiasm, as explained in the small cult articles. There, Luther writes, the papacy it also is nothing but enthusiasm, by which the Pope boasts that all laws exist in the shrine of his heart, and whatever he decides and commands in his churches is spirit and law, even though it be above and contrary to scripture and the spoken word. What we must confess, then, is that God always works through means. And not just any means, but through the external word and sacraments. Again, we read in the small called articles, God does not wish to deal with us otherwise than through the spoken word and the sacraments. And whatever without the word and sacraments is extolled as spirit is the devil himself. This is the point of St. Paul's word, hearing. Because hearing has to do with words. Not with visions, not with feelings or miraculous works, but with the word of God. Written in scripture and preached by the apostles. Even the Lord Jesus Christ did not heal without means. According to today's gospel, he healed the deaf and mute man by putting his fingers into the man's ears, spitting and touching his tongue, sighing, and speaking the word ephetha, which means be opened. Why does he do these things? He does them to teach us the importance of the means of grace. Afterwards, when men ask the man who had been deaf how the Lord had healed him, he can say, he touched me, he spat on me, he spoke to me, and thus his faith was strengthened. Likewise, when men ask us, how has God saved you? And how do you know that you are forgiven? We may confidently say, he has baptized me, and I have eaten his body and drunk his blood for the forgiveness of my sins. Our Lord also wishes to emphasize the importance of the spoken word. For the man remained deaf until the Lord spoke that word, Ephetha. A word, moreover, which the deaf man could not have heard, except for the miraculous power of that word. And thus the Lord Jesus Christ fulfilled that prophecy of Isaiah, which said, In that day the deaf shall hear the words of the book. This prophecy, literally fulfilled in the healing of the deaf man, also teaches the power of Christ's word to open the ears of the unbeliever to hear the gospel and believe. We apply this passage in the following ways. All men, by nature, are spiritually deaf and cannot understand the gospel or come to God. Therefore, man's natural state is to hate God and be damned. But it is that same gospel 
which possesses the power both to convert and to save. As already said, one who is physically deaf is not excluded from salvation because he is deaf, but physical deafness is symbolic of spiritual deafness. One may ask, how can a deaf man hear the word? The answer given by today's gospel is that the word itself makes him able to hear. So also, how can one naturally opposed to the gospel believe? The gospel itself makes him a believer. If even deafness does not hinder the word, then there is literally nothing that can prevent the word of God from coming to a man and converting him. Consider these two sentences. One, a just God would not condemn someone who never had the chance to hear the gospel. Two, infants cannot understand, therefore they cannot believe. Both of these statements are nonsense. Who is man to judge where God's word has and has not gone? Or who is man to decide what the word of God can and cannot do? As it is written in Isaiah 55, as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven, and do not return there, but water the earth and make it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. Thus far Isaiah. God is perfectly capable of sending his word where and to whom he pleases. And he is not answerable to man how this takes place. And to argue that a child cannot believe is like arguing that a deaf man cannot hear the words of the book. For what is impossible with man is both possible and easy with God. For us Christians, therefore, we are reminded to hold the word of God sacred and to gladly hear and learn it. Whatever we need, whatever we think to be impossible, God can accomplish through his word and sacraments. We have no greater treasure on earth or in heaven than these means of grace. By them, God makes the deaf to hear, the blind to see, the dead to live, and the damned to be converted and saved. A Christian is not someone who is holy in himself. A Christian is one who hears the word of God. And that word of God makes him holy. Amen. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.